theater was like must have been four minutes out. Oh, that's not bad. Four minutes. That's pretty good. You were able to finish it. Then not uh, again. You get to see all the cool stuff. Anyways, hey everyone, welcome to hey. the Chaos World Quarantine Podcast. The crew is all assembled. We're back together on the <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar. This is a thing. Andre's uh, back. Uh, uh, the Matrix brought him back. Andre's back. All right. Nah, 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 nah. Speaking of music <laughs> from that time period. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As John's second favorite boy band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. I think so. You're right. Uh, I think John's number one's Boys to Men, but we're going to continue going on. Or, or John, oh. I'm waiting for Otherwise, we're, ne- we're never going to get to the end of the road. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. you're such a renaissance man rob you missed it before we <laughs> let you go. 11 and then rob and i were <laughs> singing 311 in the background uh Andre was so confused like, I was who confused. is 311 i'm like oh, why are we listening to a song about a girl named amber <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. it's about Jurassic park don't worry <laughs> <laughs> welcome everyone back uh i'm your host dupe with me are the owners and proprietors of heroes world that be andre and john please say hello to people at home both of us today two out of folks two <laughs> just like the albino twins from the matrix <laughs> they're back baby i think aesthetically we don't fit the bill <laughs> well with some makeup you, you could the hair if we both got the hair andre o- honestly yeah. you you both would look good in dreads uh like so it'd be fine it's like that was that was definitely a look I remember people cosplaying and looking at that and you're just shaking your head going, okay, that was definitely a choice. So, uh, and then with our, our resident variant, Mr. Rob Cadet, Cadet. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. I thought you were going to call me the uh, Merovinian or something. And I was going to say, well, <laughs> the poor man talk like, 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 talk like this. What do you want? <laughs> movies <laughs> used to be good. <laughs> Superhero movies are the worst. I'm like, thanks, Martin. Thanks. <laughs> tell me, tell me what else is going on. Um, so, we're here to talk about a movie that was just released, The Matrix Revolution. We are going to do basically a resurrection. Uh, resurrection, sorry. A three minute roundabout. Uh, John, I hate you. <laughs> there you go. You People don't know at home that Andre and myself are subjected to basically John calling us Morab and myself or Andre nerds all the time for the slightest of things. All of a sudden, a test comes. Everyone, bring your matrix style glasses, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, now that's a nerd. That that that's a whole nother hey, level hey, of hey, nerd." No, nerd alert! Hundred percent. Rob is going to mention the cameras that this movie was shot on. But anyways, carry on. Hundred <laughs> percent. Rob's going to bring. I am going to. I am going to bring. He up has to. He can't the not frame rate. Up. I am bringing up the frame rate. <laughs> the red cameras, all that kind of nonsense. He's going to bring it all up. <laughs> It's it's not nonsense if you're in film school, John. Jeez, come on. He's about Rob's not in film school. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know what he's taking. He might be I know that. some master class. Time for that. that. I brought my glasses just much like uh, Neil Patrick Harris. So, you know, talk to me about what's going on. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, uh, before we'll, we'll zip around everyone, uh, John, this movie, did you give us your brief thoughts? You liked it? You, you disliked it? What, what, what are your thoughts? Without spoilers, so this movie... If you were talking about, uh, is this called, considered a legacy sequel? I think like, yeah. in that category of Creed and Cobra Kai and, mm. and, and, and Bad Boys for Life and stuff like that. If, if you told me to rent, like list off what I was expecting to come back, Matrix wasn't going to be on there. Not, not to say I didn't like, I love Matrix. Matrix is an amazing thing, but I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. I, I, I didn't uh, ask for it, but mm. man, do am I glad it happened. So uh, overall, um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I know some people got issues, and I'm looking forward to hearing where uh, everybody here uh, sits on the fence. I've talked to a lot of people about it already, and it's it's crazy um, how Divisive, polarizing this movie. The word is you're looking for, John. Divisive. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't know, like, Rob, uh, I don't know if I can use words like vis a v and stuff like that yet. But yeah, go ahead, Rob. <laughs> well, not in the context in which you're thinking. <laughs> um. I feel like I'm I'm going to be on this like middle of the road guy because I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I hate it. I just don't know if I need it. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Mm, um, it's it, you know just to, to what John said. You know, if you had put in a bunch of <clears throat> excuse me a bunch of movies into a bowl and said, hey, pick one, you're going to get a <clears throat> a sequel. Between this and Top Gun, I wouldn't have I would have lost if I didn't pick either one of those. So who knows? 
Um, but here we are 20 years later and it's, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I, I need to see it again, but I do want to see it again. If that makes sense. Like I'm really middle of the road. It's a, it's, it's bizarre. It's a bizarre movie that for all intents and purposes is a, is a, a pale comparison to its, its original, its originator. Um, and so it's whatever, impossible to top the originator, yeah. uh, but whatever, yeah, whatever, yeah. whatever people decide to do with this movie, I hope it doesn't th- though ruin what came before it. So I'll just say, it, if you're not a fan of it, hopefully it doesn't ruin it for you. No, I, I, to Rob, to your point, <clears throat> we've had many a Star Wars movie, it'll never ruin my original love for the Star Wars movies, as Andre could also attest to. The new stuff doesn't ruin the old stuff, you always have the old stuff, it's just again, everyone's trying. And even this movie without spoilers talks about like, what's the next bullet time. And I think that it's always about the next and not always embracing the old. And that's kind of what this movie was constantly trying to do teeter back and forth. And mm. uh, it, it's definitely a challenge. And, uh, but we're going to jump to Andre, get his thoughts before we continue on, on that thought train. Uh, yeah. Um, wasn't expecting it. Loved the, the kind of reveal of the trailer was we did our trailer reaction and stuff. Uh, but uh, I'm going to disagree with Rob. Uh, it was a brilliant, uh, brilliant movie. Uh, if you watched and enjoyed the other three, uh, it's definitely not, doesn't pale to the original Matrix. I would argue that it is, even though we weren't expecting a sequel, it follows the trajectory of the original and it slots in perfectly. Uh, I think if you liked any of the other three movies, and and when I say any of the other three, if you didn't, if you only liked the first one, and you didn't like two or three, don't bother going to see this movie. It's not, it's mm-hmm. not for you. Yep. Uh, but yep. if you paid attention to all those three movies, and you even watched that trailer, you should have an idea of what it is. Especially considering that it's uh, twenty years later, and they address all of those things. So. Uh, I was really, uh, really impressed with this, uh, this sequel. Um, and I think it was written really, really well. I did end up watching it twice um, and, uh, and enjoying it. And, I, and I'd go back for a third, for a third watch. Interesting. Um, John, uh, out of your a scale of one to 10, where is this movie falling in, in your scale? Um, bearing, I only fired it up once and, and kind of like Rob, I was like, uh, maybe I'll fire it up like again. And, and I did, I started again mm-hmm. and I was really captured by it, but I had other things to do that day. So I couldn't sit there and watch the second time. So based on a single watch and only just kind of like a partial kind of like watching some scenes and going, Hmm, okay, I, I, I dig this. I think I'm still going to give it, of course, you guys are going to say, I'm going to give it too high, but I'd still give it an eight out of 10 for sure. Rob. Um, I don't know. Uh, I know Andre disagrees with everything I'm going to say about this movie, but it's, it's not, I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it. I don't know. I'm it's So I'm, I'm going to give it a six right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a pretty fair grade for my feeling out of it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Andre. Eight out of 10 for sure. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Uh, I as well. Dude, where uh, did it, where did it, yeah. Sorry. I, I as well <laughs> give it a six. Um, oh, wow. I, I think philosophy wise, it's to Andre's point on par with two and three. Mm-hmm. I think it, if you follow the line that Lana Wachowski has always said that people misunderstand the matrix and this is what it's about enlightenment, this is the movie for you. I think what the problem was, and then we talked about it, is that the trailers, I wish I didn't see the trailers. It, it kind of lined me up more towards more actiony stuff. And this movie wasn't that. Uh, at the end of the day, Andre, to your point, the writing was good. The execution was questionable. Like there are a lot of things in the, the movie I watched. I'm like, Lana, maybe you should have given it to someone else to do some humor that was really done really weirdly. Like, I don't, I don't think the story is bad. I think the execution, I think a younger director or someone else with a different hand on the wheel could have done things differently that would have made this movie not seem as long as it was. I look back and I watch this movie and I'm like, man, it felt long. Mm-hmm. I watched Spider Man. It felt short. <laughs> I like I uh, like. I guess I guess the the assessment like if I was watching Spider Man on a full bladder, I would sit there and be like, I cannot leave. No matter what happens, I will just sit like, here. Hold and, it in. <laughs> I'll hold it in, baby. 
I don't want to miss anything. The Matrix, like there was a scene, one of the scenes where I would probably just get up and go to the bathroom and I'm like, I'm cool. Like, I'm not worried about it. Like, that's the type of movie this was. No disrespect to, but, to again, but different but scales though like you said it's it's a different degree of execution right yeah spider-man it's, it's, has got a different thing yeah. he's got to do and and we'll, we're gonna we're gonna jump into full spoilers because i think again to ross point i, I didn't need this movie but i'm glad it's here because i think there are, are just reinforces the idea of what lana wachowski has done although there's a weird couple digs in the movie that i just sat there going man you're just a little too like weird for me but we'll, we'll go into full spoilers. So those who haven't seen The Matrix uh, Resurrections, uh, let's let it be known that you are now entering spoiler territory. Uh, but let's let's go into it. Uh, I think you I'll, will have to judge it yourself. I, I, I don't. Let's, think let's you, go you jump into the big like thing. Guess what someone's going to think. I'm, I'm going to jump into first the first big question, you guys. We do know that this whole entire movie. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. This is the whole thing. This watch it. Hugo Weaving, Lawrence Fishburne not in this movie mm. did it hurt that they were not in this did it really hurt the movie that that there was they were not in this movie because they no. could have been but they could uh, not have no. been in this movie no okay go ahead they could not have been in this movie mm. i think that's the thing that people are people are thinking that this is like like uh uh an actual like said like a, a reboot or people calling it a soft reboot no it is it is a follow up to mm -hmm. to to what we have. It's it's a true sequel. It just happens mm -hmm. to take place twenty years later, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and how how they told the story to get the characters in there, like, you know, to get Morpheus in there. If you watched it, Morpheus was a construct of Neo, mm -hmm. right? He built that construct for someone to find to break him out of the matrix that he didn't know he was in. Yep. How did he design that program? He took Morpheus, who, if you watch the first matrix, his job was to find the one, right? Mm -hmm. Then he takes Smith, combines those two personas. Remember, at this point, he doesn't really know if his dream state or whatever is, is, is real. He puts those two things together and that gets us the Morpheus that we got in this movie. Right. That's why he's not the same. He's a combination. He isn't as good as Morpheus and he doesn't have the abilities of Smith because he's not both of like he's not like any single one part of those. Right. If you were to put those two people in that movie, if you were to put original Lawrence Fishburne in and uh, sorry, what was uh, Hugo, Hugo Weaving, Weaving. In as, as, as the Smith, then you've then you've gone nowhere. You have not pushed it. You've you, so you've you not could, moved I'm, forward. So you're saying you couldn't right? even have old Larry Larry Fishburne in in the new city, just like an old man chilling. Like you couldn't even have him there. Like I didn't give have, him Jada Pinkett's role. Yeah, like have but him he, and Jada Pinkett be there, right? Like, but what would no, that? I, would, I like the idea that Morpheus was gone. I, I like mm, that. And I yeah, like, like I like he, Andre's he, idea, like the new Morpheus construct, and 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 he killed it. Yeah, yeah, killed it. Yeah, it it, it was it was like. like we still have to recognize that what happened happened and those people were like well not those people but but um morpheus is still a real person mm. he had his existence you know after the the, the war after what neo did and mm. the smith construct as we know it right is gone it is defeated if smith came back with any of that ability then whatever neo neo sacrifice would would have been for naught and you would have had the same change in that in the new matrix right and this is a new matrix it is not the same matrix this could be now iteration eight or nine mm -hmm. right yeah. mm -hmm. so it's not it's not the same thing so you can't you you have the you know you have the the character of morpheus in because he's trying or uh lana's trying to structure it with the same people and their same course of action you follow the white rabbit neo is going to be found by morpheus and the one is going to be found by a person who loves the one so you have to look at those kind of uh i don't want to say dualities but those things are mirrored in this new movie right and if you don't follow those if you don't follow like the the, the not even the metaphors but those those types then you then you are missing it right so i i, I 
in my humble opinion, that's how I took it. So I don't know if people, you know, read I, that far. I think in. you're right. Story wise, story wise, Andre, I, I like that point story wise, but I think m money, like drawing people in, if you're going to talk about just money, Stu, if that's what you're thinking, the star power, yes, certainly would have helped. It would have helped a lot of people um, that maybe were on the fence about this movie, uh, like this movie, just to see Lawrence and Hugo Weaving back. Um, but I really, I, I, so financially wise, I think for sure it hurt the movie. Story wise, I enjoyed the points that Andre is making that, 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 that move it, move it forward for possible thirds, but I'm sure maybe Rob or, or you have some Rob? thoughts on whether they should have been, would it have changed it for you, Rob, if they added those two um, old school dudes in? <clears throat> no, I don't know if it would have changed it for me per se. Uh, listen, we got to see that, um, uh, Jonathan, I think it's a Jonathan Groff, uh, is, is playing the new Smith and, you know, they, they use a lot of cut scenes and flashbacks to the original matrix and even two and three to a lesser extent, but throughout just to tie these points in. And sometimes I wonder if it's because the story became a little bit so convoluted, they needed to keep that, that through way. So you could follow along because if you didn't have that, I think it would have been very problematic for people. I like Jonathan Groff. I mean, I'm a huge fan of uh, of Man his Hunter. portrayal in in uh, Mind Hunter, isn't it? Or Man, Man, Mind Hunter or Man Hunter? Anyways, um, from from David Fincher's series. Um, so I don't know. Like, I feel it's kind of weird because I feel like you've elevated that character of Smith by having a new skin, a new individual taking it on. He seems elevated as a higher level of existence as well within the confines of this this new version of the matrix you have as you know andre just properly put and, and greatly stated about you know th this version of morpheus but then you're also you you're still bringing back keanu reeves and carrie and moss that are tied to their old personas and so i feel like it's a an interesting teeter-totter that i don't necessarily know f they don't flow with the other characters as as completely as I thought. I mean, I know that we had uh, Niobe is back, but she's a much different character than she was in two and three. So there's progression there. I felt like Neo almost regressed. He felt like the sad, <laughs> that sad Keanu meme we've seen. Keanu meme. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't feel like there was any progression in his character whatsoever or, or his uh, the idea of Neo. So to be honest with you, I would have been probably just as fine if they're going to do this, if they had a different Neo, uh, I know, like even a but Keanu you're, you're missing, or Rob, you're, you're missing the point that he, okay. he is supposed to be, he is supposed to be sad Neo. This is 60 years after the whole, the whole point of, of this, this thing is that Neo is, he is a fraction of himself, right? He's been in this uh, Groundhog Day thing, he's drugged up by the Matrix. That's why there's that scene where they're trying to make the video game and he's running on the treadmill. And we're like, why are we seeing this scene over and over again? Each time we see that scene, that's the Matrix rebooting him on his cycle because right. he starts making the game, then he jumps off, yep. and, then, and then it repeats. That's the <laughs> whole cycle. So he's literally drugged up by the Matrix, keeping him in there as... Um, the what do they call him the analyst the, the analyst, analyst yeah. is doing it to to power the matrix right so he is drugged up and there's a brilliant part where the the new agent smith says you are missing something mm -hmm. no and I, he I, says I, yeah. he says i know and at that point he, he 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 powers through this whole movie is about reconnecting right the yin, the, the 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 two parts of of what is the one that's Neo and Trinity, right? The whole point of the first the, the first movies is you know Neo can't do without Trinity. Trinity mm -hmm. will find the one and she will know because she will love the one. The architect says Neo must look at humanity through Trinity, but why is Neo different? Because he chooses the love of one person over the love of the human race. And at that point, that's what breaks the matrix, right? That's what break, that's what sets this whole one, this the, the whole thing apart. That's what makes him different. And yes, that's what also leads yeah, to what Smith is doing. So it's it's all part. Neo cannot be this young kung fu fighting guy because 
he does not know who he is. All he knows is something is missing in his life and it all doesn't add yeah. up and he's been popping yeah. pills. Yeah. Yeah. So that's no, and, why and when, to your point, when Andre, Morpheus you gotta, him, you gotta let us go. You gotta let us talk a little bit. Yeah, I, sorry, I, sorry, bro. Like I was yeah. just trying to explain I, it because I, he missed it. Okay. Um John, give us your thoughts. What 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 did you like of those movie spoilers wise? <laughs> okay, so yeah, story interpretations aside, so we have to be careful, Andre, with it that people like didn't like certain things about it or whatever. Um and I and I see I hear what Rob's saying was maybe we should have gotten a completely new young cast um, and maybe tried to ride that way. But we're, we're talking like le legacy sequel 20 years away and Keanu still looks pretty good. Uh, Carrie Ann still looks pretty good. So to not include them in something like this before maybe a handoff to a younger um, cast or something like that would have been a, a huge, um, you know, like, like I, I think, I think a lot of people brought it up, like, how did you not have the reunion of Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, all those guys in the Star Wars things? That was a huge missed opportunity. Um, so I think the general idea of having those two back definitely hurt the overall idea of the, the, the story, because now they have to incorporate all that crap. But anyways, that, that stuff aside, um, spoiler wise, I just, just like the first watching, I came out going like, like Rob, I was like, hmm. I think that was okay. And I probably would have, if we were doing this immediately after first viewing, I probably would have went, yeah, maybe, maybe six, seven out of, out of, out of 10, but I had to sit with, and I think this, the exact same thing happened with the first matrix. When me and my buddies went to go see in theater, we came out after, and I wasn't one of those guys where, oh, my mind was blown. I loved it from right, a, right away. We were standing in the parking lot of silver city, um, just going, what, what did we just watch? Like, what is this? What happened? Right. And then once it sinks in and all these things start start hitting you. So may, maybe, you know, Andre, maybe if Rob watches the second time, maybe you like it, maybe he won't. Maybe just it just it wasn't wasn't what he was wanting from a matrix. Or maybe he just didn't want this, right, Rob? I don't know. Maybe you just didn't want uh to go back into the matrix, right? Whereas you a huge super fan, hundred percent. Why why wouldn't you want to go back? I'm surprised this we're 20 years later and we didn't get anything sooner. Um, but I liked all the I liked all the new cast, I liked all the legacy cast. I felt like they did do Jada Pinkett dirty. Uh, I'm not sure why they had to age her up that far. And Neil was 60, aged 60 up. Years. 60, 60 years. 60 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, yeah. but, 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 the, the but, but they had to. John was it that. got confusing. Neil is older also. Neil is yeah, older but also. But they rebuilt body. him. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. she's way, way older. But, but again, just that, that's kind of funny. execution of the director yeah. that did yeah, make yeah, yeah. that so clear. That was funny. I don't know. And then they had her walking around. Like whenever someone pretends to walk around. And old <laughs> pretend pretend to be old it looks really hella awkward so i yeah. i feel like and, they and did again, her dirty. the other thing too yeah. is when you're pretending to be old you talk like in one monotone but that's not a human talks like we have ups <laughs> and downs as andre did that soliloquy he went up and down in volume and pitch jada ping with the same note the entire time there was no yeah. excitement no emotion and I'm like, this is awful. Yeah, I, like, I, I felt she's like, like they, well, they uh, so they, back so... in my day that I just used to see and I have some, would you like a Welcher's uh, low coffee? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and he was like, all oh, you idiots are going to die. I'm like, where, where, where is any type of emotion? You're just saying in a monotone voice, sounding old without being old. There's no cadence to it. Right. So that, that like, again, that's just a bad director. Again, not writing. She should have yeah. been like, can you, can you emote more like an old person? I'm, I'm, I'm told I'm, that's one of, one of her weaknesses that they always kind of like to make these fake old. I, I haven't really, I don't think I've watched many of the Wachowski um, movies other than maybe Speed Racer, but someone told me that's like a thing they like to do. They like to throw prosthetics on an actor and make them look older or something like that. So, but if you're an actor, you're waiting for your director to give you directions as to how to sound old and like just sounding old is more than just saying it in one tone in one one volume. You have to go up and down, and there was nothing in her performance. It's not her fault. Again, director, editor, that's the best scene that you picked. Like she could have done it thirty times. That's what you picked. I blame you, director. I blame you, editor. I, I blame yeah, yeah. you. Or have, have her sitting in a chair or whatever. But Sounds yeah, like, yeah, agree. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm gonna fast forward through her parts. Unfortunately, you know, um, I, I wish they let her do some other things. But yeah, um, the young cast. If I had to choose my favorite, um, I think it was Jessica Henwick boring. is Bugs, right? They're all boring. You didn't like any of them. The, I, here's the I thing about the Matrix I love from the previous movie. There was tension yeah. and people died. 
there's like the ramifications of all these choices. Everyone here, not a scratch. Everyone's like, everyone just makes it alive. All the people I met, I'm like, you're going to die. You're going to die. But you can, die. But you can no say that the, the trope is also someone from the crew dies. They're like, oh, we have to kill. You one should of because these there needs or, to be like, like the whole, like we can talk about this. It's like the whole, like, what's that thing? Like the, the stupid matrix thing that they came up with instead but, of having but the door i feel like the, the agents instead of having the, the badass agents they had the swarm so mode win. yeah and the swarm mode was the yeah. dumbest thing i was like really this is stupid the, and i just sat there going this is boring this is too long cut this down like 10 minutes of people jumping out of rooftops i'm like this is andre's work bad writing like what it are you doing it became it became it world war z it was so stupid i was like man you've had three movies that do awesome sequences and the best you could do is have a person jump off and turn into like green goo meanwhile in the other matrix when an agent shows up you know that it's over there's nothing you can do like one agent could take out everyone and then Neil could barely take out one agent in the first Matrix movie. That's a and different then this Matrix. One, just, we'll do swarm mode and not worry about agents. That's a different Matrix. Agents are badass. I was like, this is <laughs> such like a terrible direction they're going in. I'm like, man, I'm like, there was like having a big boss that you feared. And then now we're just going to give a bunch of minions that are just going to explode on impact. Anyways. So uh, let yeah. me, I want to, so I mean, Andre's, you know, nailed the philosophical aspect mm. of the movie quite well. And I think that that is probably one of the, the most intriguing aspects of this movie. I'm going to well, talk about the, the whole concept of the, the matrix is the philosophy. And right. Andre but they've, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. And they've moved, yeah. they've moved mm -hmm. the ball in that regard. Yeah. But the, the first matrix was revolutionary in its uh, execution in its technology and, and I mean, how many times did people for years and years and years, they spoofed bullet time, they spoofed, they, they invented how to film a lot of these sequences and they've moved that the needle a little bit. And that was some of the, um, the criticisms about the second and third movie is that you're just kind of rehashing. You didn't really move the needle. You just, it's like the iPhone S versions. You're not mm. reinventing it. You're just putting on a brand new coat of paint. And in this one, I really would have hoped that they would have moved the the goalpost on uh, advancing technology and instead i felt like they really relied on i don't on, think they had the budget they relied on the, the they relied on the mechanisms of the first movie so much so that it actually if i watch the first movie now which i just did a little while ago i st i think that the first movie technically f is far superior than this new one the 20 plus years out and that like it's 22 years i think right so that to me, like, I was very surprised. Like I, I knew they were going to do the bullet time. I knew they were going to do the, the, the fast dodging. I felt like it looked really poorly executed here. Like, I don't know if they thought, oh, we're going to use faster computers to render this, but it looked, it looked bad for me, like the moving out of, out of frame, but that is all derivative of the first movie. The first movie was derivative of nothing. It created. And I was really hoping that this would create something to, so that the legacy of action movies I, that come I, after I just, it stand on its shoulders. And I didn't I, feel like this movie. I didn't. hear you, but that's the same thing about Star Wars. Star Wars changed the game, but you can't have a new Star Wars every single time. Like Star Wars episode one, like, you know, that the new hope revolutionized film. And you just can't be like every single one's going to revolutionize film. It, it, it's not going to happen. It, it's just, no, but I, I guess what I said is I wish they had invented or done something. They didn't different. have to invent. I think they just have to just went back to not always bigger is better. I think yeah. what the, the other two matrix did was they're like, we're going to world build. We're going to do a freeway action yes. sequence. We're going to do yeah. big scope and size. And what made the first matrix so wonderful was that it was very tight. It was a small, small rooms, small areas. Like people were kind of interacting in corridors and things where you didn't yeah. have to be on a freeway jumping from car to car in the second two second matrix everyone had the jedi jump like everyone could jump yep. in this movie no one could jedi jump everyone was like i'll have to take the stairs i'm like oh yeah this is interesting this is everyone forgot how to do the triple jump he but couldn't fly couldn't that, that's even the thing but even trinity and and morpheus could jump higher than normal because they could they opened up their mind to enlightenment right. that they could do it so i disagree Doesn't with you that like do like a crazy jump I think I she does like a jump from one side and like Morpheus kind of spins and, and jumps off the corner of a building. 
in in the Whatever. new one, right? In this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a, a the digital thing. He's those nanobot oh, he's, things. John mentioned bugs. The the, bugs, the girl, yeah the nanobite the girl. The girl. She she oh, bugs. yeah, and but, but off and yeah grabbed, right? yeah she did a little bit. But in yeah. the big and sequence, she did the wall running and stuff yeah. like that. But in the yeah, big she, sequence she, when they're all fighting in that close confort, she's like, I gotta take the stairs, and I'm like, what? You're taking the stairs? Like, can't you just jump like you did before? It's anyways. That uh, that's I digress. It, it's. I think Rob, that you, The Matrix is one of those movies that it's a top hundred film of all time. It it revolutionized, it changed. Even if this movie wasn't going to be better for better than it, we were just hoping it equaled in terms of like just keep it on par with the level of quality that movie was. And in the, the day, we had one of the Wachowski sisters doing it, yeah. and two, it wasn't about budget. It was just they had so much to do in terms of filling out the history, adding and stuff. And it was really difficult because you're watching a reminder of the Matrix in this movie. You're seeing Hugo Weaving. You're seeing like Lawrence right. Fishburne on the screen. And you're like, you're seeing the other characters stand directly in front of it. But like, here's my impression of Hugh, of, of yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, cool. It like, reminded me of what Wes Craven did with A New Nightmare. Mm. It's the exact same idea in terms of its execution. It's like, oh, this exists, but it, it, we're in a real world now, right? Like it was the kind of the same idea. All I'm saying is I just wish like Neo's biggest power set was stopping bullets. We saw that. I, I thought but, that they would have given him something fair, different. So. The writer had indicated that Neo in this film, I did, I read some additional stuff. He purposely didn't fire guns or did anything yeah. because that's not his character anymore. He, he refuses to as a pacifist kind of thing where oh yeah he doesn't want I didn't to notice kill, that you don't want to kill people so you watch this it's more more tai chi more protection and like what he was mm. pushing people he wasn't doing it in an off uh in a, in a killing blow it was more mm. of a protectionist way for him and trinity in terms of the like and again that that whole philosophy as andre talked before it was the nature of Hey, in the matrix, second matrix, the one is you find out that it's not a unique situation. It's part of Andre mentioned the tread, the treadmill. It's we've always had this person. It's a falsehood of choice. And the, the third movie was all about Neo sacrificing that love that Andre mentioned for the betterment. It's basically it's not just humans versus robots because everyone thought that's what the movie was about in Matrix One. It's like, no, it's harmony. It's it's what Agent Smith couldn't understand. It's compromise. It's love connecting with others. So he sacrificed himself to at the end of that movie. But yeah, to your point, Andre, like it was about the two, but at the end, it was about him sacrificing himself for the betterment of everyone, you know, all together. That was the reason why him and Trinity were so important for the Matrix breaking that wheel is because he, every single one of the one chose the people of Zion over himself and this was the first time he that that person the one had someone to care for and love for so that changed the nature of the matrix so andre i have to ask you philosophically the writing again i'm not arguing that but you were you not at all disappointed with the lack of like action sequences of this one compared to the other ones like not at all you, you were all. fine with it the, see here's the thing the the pacing does feel off um but it follows the same pattern as the original Matrix movie. It starts with that crazy action scene and then they get into the ship. The difference is this movie doesn't get to the real world till later because it has to establish that loop that Neo is in. And then it has to explain what happens. And then we have that very similar scene where they are freeing Neo. So I do get that the pacing is, is off. But at the same time, like I said, I, I why I truly believe this is is it's a worthy sequel is because they do establish that time has is has passed. It's been sixty years, and they say it's only been twenty years for you, Neil. We don't understand why you are different. They talk about how his digital thing has been altered and stuff, and they don't know why they couldn't find him. They just believe they would find him. So when you get into the real world at that point, you notice that okay, yeah, that the movie is getting on in time and you're like they haven't what's what's the what are they going to do what is neil's course of action and then they reveal the plan and it gets into more world building so yes maybe you're saying will it end in a bigger fight scene like we got with smith but there wasn't the 
there wasn't that Smith-esque villain that they were building up to. And it would have been silly if it was um, Neil Patrick Harris character if they started if, they, if he'd done a kung fu fight with Neil yeah, Patrick Harris is- <laughs> that, would, that, would, that wouldn't have worked and, and and I'll even argue that that fight scene where the um where the new Smith comes with the Merovingian that was unnecessary but they put that in because they're like oh crap we've had too much of 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 I guess no time without a fight right so it does establish like I said the point that that, that is, but it, it wasn't absolutely necessary, especially when you get that big kind of uh, what did you call it? They were falling out of the sky, the, the swarm. Mode. Oh, yeah, yeah swarm. you were getting swarm more l- later. So, yeah, I think there's all kinds of different things at play. Like maybe it wasn't, maybe the studio had their hand in it. Like they, she even makes a joke they're going to make this sequel with or without us, you know, for the video game. In the, yeah, that, so that's the story that that's they were making the sequel part of no matter what. what what was going to happen. Like maybe, I don't know, I didn't research it, but maybe the, the Warner said, we're going to make a Matrix sequel with or without you, yeah. Lana. It is, uh, so yeah. That's you exactly can get on happened. board and, or we're going to, and then maybe she says, yeah, I can write something and I can make it this more, you know, personal personal journey. I'm going to stick it to stuff. you while I'm doing it. Right? Well, yeah. I, 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 t- you know, she, you know, from various reports, she was ready to quit the movie uh, during the pandemic hiatus and it mm-hmm. required Keanu and them to be like, you got to come back and finish this movie. So she was ready to like bounce halfway during the movie. So I, I couldn't imagine what it would have been like if you brought in, you know, an, another director halfway during it. It, it would have been a Han Solo situation all over again where it's two separate movies and they try to patch it back together, which... <laughs> Uh, in our uh, estimation, never works well. Anytime you have one director come in and another one comes in to fix the uh, the problems, uh, I can't name a movie that got better based on that. Whether it was Superman, uh, whether you know it was uh, you know AI or or uh, you know uh, the yeah. Anyways, um, my my question to you, Andre, is where does where does this movie rank in the Matrix movie? Because Matrix One is oh. out and. N- n- no, number one, no, no questions asked. What is where does this movie fall into the rankings of your matrix rankings? See, that's a tough question because I did enjoy all of them, and and I think we've got to be just blatantly honest and really push the fact that not a lot of people like Matrix two and three. Oh, yeah, but, you know, people even, hated them so, yeah. so <laughs> much, so yeah. much so yeah. that, like, again, I've always said, listen, if you're calling them two and three, you don't get it. It's one movie. They released them six months apart. They are literally pick up from the, it's just that they couldn't have put that second part and made a four hour flick. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I like them all. What I will say about this particular movie is after watching it, I had the same feeling of, um, questions and wanting to know more like my mind was opened up to the possibilities that the original matrix movie did like when when we after i first saw that i'm like oh my god zion they mentioned a city what's that like how did we get to this point how do we get it and then in this one they talked about oh i want to know what like let me see the robot wars. Let me see machine on machine. Let me see the interaction of the human when the first sentient came to them and said, I want to work together. They showed us three wor- uh, They showed us the Animatrix, Andre. It didn't work well for us humans. <laughs> I, I, I get it. He showed I, up with a flower and then we, we broke it down. I'm like, no, but, oh, but right, in this, yeah. but in yeah. this world, it did work. Like, like even yeah. like, like I said, I, there was so much, I think, you know, moments of you know sparks of brilliance and stuff like like the name of the city io one zero right like man machine binary like it's brilliant like you know just the the moment where you know uh the the robot sabebe you know oh god you mean the avatar (laughs) the avatar (laughs) cast off (laughs) listen i don't know anyways Andre got confused with sebulba he was like oh he was like going to to a pot eraser he was like oh he's inside the machine right sebulba bigger robots i didn't get that little robot 
Like when when he like high fives that little tiny robot. I'm like, uh, it was a, that was a transformer <laughs> moment. That was from that Transformers. Was, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. A little transformer like, moment. Yeah. Michael Bay get a cameo. <laughs> but I like I like the bigger robots. I let me ask. Cool. Let me ask something though. Do you think Andre didn't finish average... rankings? Oh, yeah, he didn't right, finish the rankings. So, yeah, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he's, he's, he's trying it. to he's trying to skate around it. I I know what you're trying to do. You can't you can't fool us. Bullet dodge. No, I was just trying to tell you that this particular one. It is number three so, then, okay, right? If I'm, if I'm gonna, if I, I'll rank it, I would go uh, one, four, two, three. Well, you said two and three is one movie, so then you would. But he's okay. yeah, but he's going by the, the confines together. though, yeah. based on the yeah. okay on, yeah. on its release. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, John. Same question. Ranking out of the. Uh, four? I I think I probably like. Unfortunately, I can't remember the difference between three and four. So I know they're at the bot the bottom end. Although some of the scenes from them are just great, like if if there was some type of cut, like or if they cut, somehow fit it into one movie and then a Snyder cut for it or something like that, maybe that oh, would somehow no, somehow slide up. No. Kill Bill one and two, but yeah. if they don't do that, yeah. they're not going to put Matrix two and three together. And, and and unfortunately for 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 three and four, some of the technological aspects, like the big Smith fight and all that kind of stuff, does look very dated. Whereas mm-hmm. for some reason, the first one, just what they did in the first one. It doesn't look dated, which is crazy to think about. Because they only had um, one so, yeah. Smith, and they only did one. They didn't have the CGI fifty of yeah. them. Yeah, so. but at, at the time it was incredible, right? But sure. now we look yeah. at it, we go, "Hey, that that was done in Kung Fu Hustle." That and you could do it a hundred times better nowadays. So the VFX in this movie definitely are, are head head and shoulders above some some of the stuff that they did in those other movies. I'll still that the highway sequence in uh, two is freaking incredible. But yeah, one, four, and then three and four somewhere down there. What wait one four three and four? Where's two go? You you oh sorry, two and three. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. One, four, two, and three. Thanks, John. Thanks. I'm good with numbers. Uh Rob. Um I need to watch this movie again. Um to really to really understand where I want to lie on this one. My instinct is to say one, four, two, and three. If I was to to not look at number two and three because I do agree with John that the 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 CGI and that is really dated. Um, so I have the potential for that, but I'm I'm just gonna have to rank it numerically one, two, three, and four um, right now. But I am open to revising that fourth one. My question though, I, I want to ask though, is that you know I know that Andre and a lot of people who listen to this show are big on world building things. There's a lot, a, a lot of individuals who love the expansiveness and the world building, but there's just as many or equal to a people who just like bang, bang, shoot, shoot, a fun action. Let's move on. And like I, my son and I watched this and it, within the hour, the first hour, he was like clapping on the couch. He was like looking on his phone. He was done. Like there was so much world building, like exposition, explanation, the, that the action scenes, he just, he, he's, I can't watch this anymore. He was out. he liked the first movie a lot. So I wonder though, if these world building, and I wondered if the reason why a lot of people didn't like two and three as much is because when it gets to be too, too much world building, if the, av- if, if half the population is just like, I, I don't want to get into that. I, I want to go to the movie to be entertained and enjoy. I don't need to have all this world building stuff. And I wonder if then this becomes a niche market of movies that people can all go back and watch the first one and love yeah. it it's, it's, but two three and four sure, are yeah. for a very su- a special subset of I, I, I think like wachowski's after the first movie realized people didn't really truly understand their vision mm-hmm. as this movie is about enlightenment it's about unshackling your thought process it's not about the blue pill the red pill not about man versus machine it's neo is flying cool but everyone had that god superpower complex at the end of it's like i want to be like neo it's like but that's not what neo is about it's about opening your mind to the new possibility and enlightenment and with the two and three they really went hard it's like oh yeah yeah, you don't get it we're really going to show you what this means what philosophy is it's like if you are a philosophy major you're sitting back you're like this is everything we've learned about yeah you're eating it up like you're uh, eating it it out about about missing the irony of like the first movie people are like oh you're you're in a prison a limited prison of your mind your mindscape break out that's what the matrix is about and then as andre talked before it's like you know the second movie was all about 
similar as to, you know, the wheel, this whole thing about the matrix, you, you think you have choice, but you actually don't have choice. And these were what the movies were about, but everyone was still so wrapped up around the guns and the violence and like, well, Neo is the one. So therefore he can do like, it became like a superhero movie. So Wachowski's went the other direction. It's like, maybe we can teeter this line of giving people a taste of philosophy, but also gunplay and like an action movie. Maybe we can do it. And unfortunately people are like, no, they want to just watch a movie. That's why Grey's Anatomy NCIS is on season 20. People just want to sit back, unwind, watch something, eat popcorn and carry on. They don't want to have to think about stuff philosophical questions after a long day at work so that 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 really is what hurts the matrix especially this movie i think at the end of the day the 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 whole thing same thing about the backlash of people not liking it again the writing the concepts of this movie is there just especially now with the pandemic people are worn out they just want happy things they want to watch a movie that's fun which is why spider-man is across the billion dollars because it's just a fun entertaining ride and people just want an escape and they don't want to watch escape to see Keanu as Andre mentioned like it's wonderfully done that first 15 minutes is great and then it slowly starts kind of digressing across the movie Mm -hmm. but that's not you know but that's that's the nature of the storytelling of this right it's like you have to get darker to get to the light um so yeah to your your guys point like matrix one two three four that's how I rank them like I'm this is it. I feel like this is the weakest one just based on the crutches of, of like it didn't it handheld me too much for my my liking and the matrix two and three really let you just expand and watch it like you watched it you got it carry on so uh, but that's just my thing so Rob you've talked before go we'll potentially watching again will you consciously if it gets released in the theater in like a year or two would you spend the time to go to the theater would you would you go back out there and do it again or Hmm. like oh is this a movie you're gonna think back six months and watch it like where are you gonna be because i'll just watch it a few times but where are you in your mindset of like refreshing and watching this movie we talked about this with spider-man where it took you the second viewing to really kind of get in the zone yeah i had other things um going on that took me out of the first viewing um but you know what the one thing i i missed about this is i i you know, this, I, there was nothing in this movie that made me think, oh shit, I want, I need to see this on the big screen. Like mm-hmm. none of the action sequences or not, not, none of the action scenes were like calling for me to go see it on the big screen or even IMAX. So I would definitely just watch it probably from the comp, like a, my 60 inch. Uh, I just upgraded my surround sound guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, uh, I am fancy. <laughs> I would, you know, hit that Dolby Atmos, uh, and in, in my basement and, and, and rock it to that. There was just unfortunately nothing. So I would have been fine watching in the theater. Um, but we just didn't have that option right now. So I was, I'm, you know, at home, but there, again, I would, I am going to rewatch it probably within the next couple of weeks, but I will probably be, I, I mean, obviously it's going to be at home as opposed to the theater. There's just nothing that makes me want to go to the theater to see this. It's too bad. I really, I really would have liked to have seen a really wicked action scene that you're like, holy shit, this is will look amazing on the big screen. Maybe the train, maybe the train sequence, um, but that was probably about it. I, I, tried I that hard. that was probably the funniest moment when they were like, we gotta fit you into the little mirror, like that, and they're like what? And they go, don't forget perspective. The, the closer you get to the mirror, the bigger it looks. And I was like, whoa, this is like Doctor Who. What's happening? It's bigger on the outside, so. Um, <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, I did like, I think what the matrix does really well. And this movie echoed it was the operator. I think that this time the operator was so well, like they, they nail what the, the Sakura, yeah. uh, like the, or whatever, because I think he's named after the tree or whatnot. Um, I, I think that the operator this time around was really well done because he was just kind of there in his full yeah. operator gear. Like I'm telling you what's going on. And they had like a face interface telling it. Um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, I did laugh when like all the people from Sense8 shows up and all the people yeah. in the Matrix are just, <laughs> when they walk into the Matrix, they're the, the cool dyed hair and the facial hair or whatever. When they're out of the Matrix, they're all losers, like John would yeah. say. They look like us, like a bunch of normies. Right. And they yeah. go in and it's like everything you'd hope to be like when you're yeah. the cool guy with the cool sunglasses and the nice gelled hair and you're wearing the, the trippy suit. 
So I they were going to go crazier. I felt like they went kind of subdued and toned back like, compared uh, again, to I, compared to Bugs who had the blue hair. Yeah, and the, I, and the I sunglasses. Guy more the in that freaking gold suit. Oh man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah's outfit choices were on fire the entire time. They but, were crazy. Andre, uh, get that suit. <laughs> I was honestly expecting the the the. I guess he's scandinavian or german the guy that was like i've never met a legend before i expected that guy oh, to die yeah i was like he's way too yeah. like they've given some yeah, lines, none of the like, group none of the group were killed yeah i was like oh he's making me like this guy and i'm like mm-hmm. he's gonna sacrifice himself and then again everyone lives i'm like oh, okay yeah, cool that's why yeah. I, it, I, I feel like killing people just to make it you know they did in the first one and it was it was like the moment when that happened they already I think did it though they already did i know but one. like the moment when we all watched first matrix is like oh not like this and then you're like <clears throat> and you're yeah, like oh this is plug. just like a you can't have it happen again. moment in the matrix <laughs> and even the matrix too like people like died and you're like oh there are ramifications <laughs> so they should have brought joey joey pants back um to play cypher <laughs> to, to get like unplugged again <laughs> no because he wasn't unplugged he unplugged no, he everyone was, else. Oh, he got he got yeah. blasted. Yeah, yeah, he, but got he got blasted. Unplugged everybody else. Yeah, by tank, <laughs> by dozer, dozer, right? Those dozer. The, the older brother is dozer, I believe. Yeah, younger brother was tank. Tank, yeah. sorry, tank dozer. was the operator. Dozer was the uh, mechanic. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like I, I just sat there going, Bring him back to kill some guys. <laughs> No, but where's the sacrifice? Like, even when Jada Pink is like, I, I need two volunteers to do this. <laughs> and then all of them walk forward is like, you all are crazy. And I'm like, well, <laughs> now she's from the South. Uh, let's just be glad that they didn't bring uh, the rave party from Zion. I missed the rave party. Like, honestly, <laughs> that was on- awesome. the rhythmic awesome. drumming. And <laughs> Rob, what you don't know is that they were playing 311 back. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was, yeah. it was crazy Trey. It was a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> a little butterfly. Baby. Like this is this is this is the thing. Um okay. John. I did like the end song though. I mean, it's it's they used brass against the machine, right? For the <laughs> yeah. it, they, they they're known for doing covers, yeah, covers. Of, yeah. of of rock. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting that she chose brass against the machine for the exact same. For the exact same ending song, right? From Rage. So, um, John, who was the best? Who was the MVP of this movie? How do you not go with like Keanu? But um, I don't know, oh, well, I'm saying who is uh, <laughs> You can say whatever you want. You can't not go with Keanu. It's like 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 Andre said, he's the key point of the of this movie. I I really like all the new cast, but I always like kind of seeing newer newer people step up in the light. I wish uh. Jessica Henwick maybe got a little bit more time. Um, she made but, her choice. Yeah, <laughs> she could have gone back to Marvel, and she's like, she, no, no, no. She could have been. No, thank God. She's like, yeah. eh. no. I think, I think, I think, I think she. A, I think if you had to on paper, I think this is the juicier role. <laughs> I, I under she control, know. dude. She was going to be Shang Chi's sister, buddy. That, that you know, she was going to have her own Ten Rings TV show where she's yeah. going to run them <laughs> like. Man, that that role yeah. was awesome. I'm like, yeah. and then now she's she's this. I was like, all right, cool. Like bugs, cool. Yeah. Uh, if, if so, if you take if you take Keanu Reeves off the table, no, then, it's then... He, he's on the table. Well, who's the best? Yeah. Part? Why would I take yeah. him off the table? Is he your MVP? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Rob. Yeah. Shout out to Neil Patrick Harris. But yeah. <laughs> well, I I actually think Neil Patrick Harris as the analyst was phenomenal mm-hmm. in this movie. Mm-hmm. Neil Patrick Harris can often need a good times be Neil Patrick Harris, right? Even in 8-Bit Christmas, uh, which uh, I just watched a couple weeks ago on Crave, he's Neil Patrick Harris. There's a lot of times it's just, he, he's just a version of himself. And in this, I was a little bit concerned, um, but I thought he did a fantastic job throughout the entire course of this movie. Um, and so for me, yeah, he's my MVP with runner-up to Jonathan Groff. Andre? Uh, yeah, I would say Neil Patrick Harris was really good, but I will pick uh, uh, Jennifer Henwick. I think she did a phenomenal job, um, especially I really liked when she stood up to um, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith and she's like, mm. you you lost, you don't believe in freeing minds anymore. She she had a big part, like she did like- Strawberries. <laughs> she, was, she was really good. Like, uh, yeah, I thought she was really good. Well, I, I think her, even that one, the- I liked, to your point, Andre, even the way that they, the writing was when she talked about, hey, remember the crap we used to eat? Like, we were so busy on just survival. We weren't elevated enough to make these strawberries. Like, this is yeah. where we are in civilization. Like, we have elevated ourselves from not just 
ha being happy with the gruel we have, but we're pushing forward to the stuff we can do. Even when, um, when uh, that other character who was the operator, and I've already forgotten his name, uh, was like, hey, you see the, the, the lights? Like, and he yeah. explained everything, but it was like in context to the story, it, it was not like a data dump of like, oh, this is, I'm telling you just for the sake of like, because we have to tell you, but the yep. character genuinely like excited about like the technology advances they had. So I'm like, hey, this is like really well done as a, you know, and some of the other stuff was not so well done but yeah to that point i would have been more impressed if she brought out a cow if she was like Moo, <laughs> yo that steak remember yeah. cypher betrayed us for the stupid steak you made that shit right here <laughs> it was like one strawberry you, you're gonna hand it like how big i is don't the think they have the, the population DNA. of that of i don't that think city. they have the dna for the cow john it would it'd probably be like a human cow and okay. it'd be a lot of problems Who, what 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 dictates if you get a strawberry then in this in this new setting? Like, do you have to be the, you know, that one family gets one strawberry? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's it's a it's a one. Everyone gets one strawberry. That's how it goes. You get one and you get to share it. Uh, I don't know how how the farm agriculture works, John. That's what Andre the next show is about. The Matrix <laughs> agriculture. It, it's like it's like Clarkson Farm, and then it's yeah, gonna right. be <laughs> Neo walking through. It's like let's let's show you how we make strawberries in the future. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, you have whoa. blueberries <laughs> yeah and like the blueberries are next how do yeah. they make blueberries that's right uh and and uh i guess like boysenberries would be after that so this is what happens uh john who who was the weakest link in this movie who is who is I, I, I've, I've already said it the, the age jada pinkett smith and i think it's just the position they put her in the like you said the delivery of her lines definitely off her her walking around giving the speech was really awkward to watch. I'm like, they're trying to do West Wing. They're, they're trying to do why the is she walk pretending and talk? to to old to old walk. Like it looked yeah. really, it looked really bad. So 100 percent her and and I thought they were gonna get. I thought I was like, why did she take this role? Why did she come back and read the script and go, I get to be old? And then they flash back and they show her kind of like young yeah. doing like like the resist. I was like, oh, this is why she took the part. They're gonna give her more time and she's gonna get this whole thing. And then that was it. That we saw like one glimpse. So I'd like to see more of that. I think I think John, uh, yeah, there weren't know. many opportunities for her to do acting gigs during the pandemic. She's like, give me that sweet, sweet matrix money. <laughs> it's I, I can do this because there, there wasn't any. I heard some people show. say that sh that should have been a Morpheus role, but I think that would have been all wrong. I like the Morpheus I, I, statue I think... and that he was like kind of like this tribute to him and stuff. I like, yeah, I, I kind of like that he was gone. I, I think to Andre's point, as I think more about it, I, I wouldn't mind uh, like Morpheus being the AI robot that he was like when he transitioned back to. Uh, but like to your point, if he was there, he would have just said, Neo, do your thing. And there wouldn't have been any type of conflict. He'd <laughs> be like, of course you can do whatever you want. I got you. So yeah, the more I think about it, you're you're right, Andre. If, if Morpheus was in that, in, in IO, then he would have just said, do whatever you want, Keanu. Like, do whatever you want, Neo. Like, here are the keys. Here are all my forces. Do whatever you do. No questions asked. You, you needed her to kind of be more curmudgeon, soft curmudgeon. She was like the whole like, yeah, you can't do it, but you can. Don't worry about it. Boys will be boys. So, you know, you needed a little bit of something. And then they put her in the, they put him in the, um, the uh, Rapunzel Tower, as, as they mentioned. Uh, Rob, who's the weakest person in this movie? I was trying to find uh, uh, the name of the actress, but I actually changed my mind. I'm, I'm going to collectively say all of the people on uh, the ship, the like all the the, the sub characters. Mm -hmm. I felt that I was really kind of surprised because in the first movie we got to really know all the people on the ship, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Which calls back to what you said earlier about how. When their deaths happened, it meant something because we mm -hmm. got to know them. We got to, uh, you spent time with them. And in this one, they felt very, um, like, just like tacked on. Like there was nothing, I, there was the one, I think her name was Lily or whatever. She had a little bit of interaction with Keanu mm -hmm. uh, because she was saying that she looked up to Trinity. Trinity. And I was like, you know, that's really cool. Like I, I expected maybe a little bit more out of the rest of that cast, but they were just kind of fanning over you know, uh, Neo and Trinity and, and there was nothing. And so I, I have to say, like, I was just kind of surprised because as a whole, the group I felt didn't, and that's why I am, even though John's like, well, they've already, why would they kill anybody? They didn't, they did it all in the first movie, but because these, 
these the group of four of them that were there, aside from Jessica Henwick, they were so throwaway that I was very surprised that none of them had any type of, of death scene. Even so. their Neil. You Ologious. wouldn't you wouldn't have cared then. You wouldn't have cared then if they died. Well, you know what I mean? You know, I know, but but I don't care if they lived either because there's nothing there. <laughs> so and the only other thing I was gonna say is the Mer- Merovinian because I, Andre said, what was the point of him showing up? Like, it was like, oh, look, there's somebody else for another movie. But it was like, hey, he looks like Robin Williams in The Fisher King. Like, I don't really or care. Jumanji. Right? So, or, or, or Jumanji. Right, the original Jumanji. Whichever yeah. you want to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andre? Um, I would probably... oh, It's going to be hard for you because you like this movie so much. You're going to pick someone who's, who's well, not no, great. Like, I, don't someone, think, yeah. I don't think he's definitely... I don't think he acted like poorly, but I didn't like the character. I found him very irritating. The Neo's um, like oh, the assistant s- guy, sidekick, assistant guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 you know that guy. Yeah, but but I guess he played guy. the part well. He wasn't supposed to be likable, but uh, but yeah, I would I would probably. But I guess but, it's not unfair to call him his a bro. Like, I, don't, I don't know. If, I don't know. If, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd go yeah. with him. Uh, yeah, it was it was so funny that uh, Chad. Um, Sarsky uh, Sarsky was hey, Trinity's was husband. husband and I was laughing yeah. I'm like well I know that guy you know, yeah. like <laughs> he's director he, of John Wick that director of John Wick that guy? and I was like <laughs> yeah. like he was Keanu's stunt double in the Matrix I was like oh are they gonna actually fight I was like I was waiting I'm like oh they're gonna do something and then nothing happened I'm like he's not a great actor because he's like Trinity <laughs> He's like, don't touch me. I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, it's Tiffany. Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany. Yeah. Tiffany. Yeah. That, that was great. When he's like, no, that's not my name or whatever. Call me Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then uh, she got really uh, mad. She goes, fuck you for calling me Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Shoots him right in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And his jaw completely yeah. separates and he has to like put it back together. Let, yeah. The, yeah. The whole thing about like, don't touch her. I'm like, we get it. You don't want to be touched. Every, every yeah. single movie is like, don't touch me or I'll break your hand. I'm like, ah, okay, right. we get it. We get it. We get it. Um, before we wrap things up, uh, mm-hmm. John, look in your crystal ball, put on, put on your, 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 uh, wizard cap, uh, is there going to be another Matrix movie? Do you want another Matrix movie? Just, That's the question. Which is, I, I do. That. I 100% do. You yeah, want another? No, I, I do you want with Keanu? Do you want with someone like, else? Yeah. No, I, def- I definitely feel like maybe Keanu's got another one or two, but I feel like this one was probably um, just the opportunity of them to do it uh, was probably pretty unique. I'm pretty sure Keanu, Carrie Ann, and that kind of stuff. And even if they wanted to add Lawrence and, and Hugo even to the mix, they probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to to, to coordinate that in, in, especially in this time. And, you know, they're, they're, they're getting older. Like the, the other two guys that are absent, they're over 60. Keanu is like about to hit 60 and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So um, I, I, I will def, I would definitely watch a movie with the passing of the torch to, like I said, I liked all these younger actors and actresses um, and, and stuff like that. So yeah, hundred percent. I would like to see it. Is it going to happen? I feel like it is. Cause this is 20 years later. Like I'm surprised they, that we didn't have more stuff cranked out for the matrix since then it's like this weird thing that they like kind of put on a shelf they did a couple of video games didn't work out technology wasn't there mm-hmm. uh, and then they walked away and then now they're coming back 20 years later so i think since they've already cracked it open uh i feel like it's gonna it's gonna happen i think uh rob <clears throat> um will they um it's hard i think listen this movie's got taken a drubbing at the box office um, I, it's not necessarily at the fault of the content of the movie. A lot of it is due to COVID and it's all also, a lot of it is due to the streaming on HBO max in the United States. Although that being said, it's the lowest out of the, the releases, including, um, uh, Kong versus Godzilla and mm-hmm. uh, suicide squad. It's, it's racked up the least amount of views on HBO max for a day and date release. So, by the numbers, unless this thing starts to get a bit more of a cult following in the in the coming, maybe it's the wrong time of year to have released this movie. Um, I just don't know if financially if they will make one. Uh, if they do, I would be open to watching it. Uh, I would love to see Keanu actually take on the Morpheus role and have to find another one for a, a new version of the Matrix. Maybe something happens. I like the end. I mean, the end sets up something. The end gives you a hope that there's something is you know potentially is going to happen but i i just don't know if financially if they will do it andre i know for sure you want to a, a, a movie but would you prefer, how, how would i spin this question 
would you rather a TV show or a series that like it, on HBO Max that ha- delves into more of the back history of the Matrix, or would you want another? No, two I would. Movies? I would bookend this with another Animatrix, mm. and then and then leave it up, and then and then leave it at that. You know, uh, you can you can fill in the gaps if you mm-hmm. wanted in between what happened in this sixty year gap. Mm-hmm. You can tell those stories, and then you could tell what happens. Uh, from the end, from what uh, Neo and Trinity, uh, what they establish at, at, at the end. I don't, I don't think you need another live action movie if you're going to try and capture these original people. Like John said, they're they're getting on in years, and like Rob said, the movie didn't isn't going to make uh, isn't going to make them back their 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 budget, r- regardless of if that's content or or timing, right? So they're 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 not going to bank on it again. Uh, so finish it in animation. Animation is is uh, super uh, cost efficient now and and easy to make look excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and and stuff in the Bring back all the voices. So you could have all yeah. the voices in there. Yeah. Even you know even the original Matrix. I think the the budget wasn't that high. It was still like, like how seventy much? mil. Okay. 70 yeah, mil yeah, like, like that. It, it was you know uh yeah i think you were right john it was about 70 something million i think from from 63 um million I, I think if the matrix if they retooled it to be more like the first one and just kind of tighten the scale it doesn't have to be world building it doesn't have to be like in the second matrix where it's flying to like you know, Switzerland and like LA and all these different countries, like just keep it kind of tight. Um, maybe use the void like they do in, in, in uh, Star Wars and just kind of be more budget conscious. I think they could make some really good movies. I, I think when directors just are- had a semi-modest budget, I think it's 190 mil. So for that's for, modest, 190 is modest now. For yeah. for 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 a move for what people were expecting from this yeah, movie, but the I special like effects that, look that's poor, modest, man. Uh, I I I contend I the know, bullet I, I, time and the and the movement of them moving fast to avoid punches looked really shitty comparative to the original. I was shocked at how i don't it think it looked that great in the original. I think it like, was just even oh, even like man, an going. Avengers movie is like 250. So like 60 million, that is that much of a gap between the two? Like, was it all just paying Keanu? Like, I am just trying to figure out where the money went. Well, you know what? Movie. Admittedly, I, I think they probably had a lot of it was would have been the COVID related, you know, related. Hmm. Even even that, like, uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense to me. But, you know, maybe I, it was I, a high end fancy cameras they use with that high end frame rate that really messed the shit up because it looked wonky to me. The red cameras? Or whatever they call them, <laughs> the Sony, the Sony red ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it looked bizarre to me. I didn't like it. I, I want. I would like to see more Matrix. I think we just have to scale our expectations of what the Matrix is. I, I think Andre put it very well that if you like two and three, this is your wheelhouse. <laughs> I think it's kind of weird that this this franchise is like Matrix One is this movie and then by the way everything else is a whole different direction and yeah hold hold on to yourself because you may not like this so you could probably tell within the first half an hour of the matrix 2 that it, whether you're you're down or not because if you're if you're not you must just turn off the movie and just not even bother going any further because if you don't like it it's not going to change any shape or form it's going to be you know more more down the same type of conversation street at the end i Man, like, as I said before, I wish I didn't see the trailers. I wish I didn't know mm-hmm. anything about this movie. I, I think what really stuck me was that even the other... Similar to the promotion movie, for the first one, right? The yeah, first well, movie, you do no, nothing. E- even it's more to two and three, Um, to be fair. Like, it was kind of like, oh, what is the Matrix? And then there's action sequences in this thing. And then I watched the movie and there wasn't as many action sequences as I imagined. And it wasn't anything really like the first one. It was... Like I liked the cool looking metallic pills. Like, well, like that's really cool. That looks different than the last time. Like it really pops, but none of it was like, man, like this is, this is, I guess. To I really like that Smith, Smith, uh, Keanu refight where they had, and they brought the sink back and everything like that. Like, like two of those most iconic scenes were the, I guess the subway fight <clears throat> And, and, and yeah, but I already that, have that the better fight. version yeah. of it in the other movie. So why am I seeing this one with another actor? I don't know. I, 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 I like that scene. And then I, I was expecting maybe a throwback to the lobby scene. But if, like you said, they didn't want to have guns uh, 
the, well, the Neo main didn't thing have, in this like, movie. Do it. But, but to your yeah. point, John, like maybe you just liked it because Jeff, uh, you know, that what was the name. Uh, Jonathan Groff was wearing loafers with no socks. Like maybe you're down with this. You're like, yeah, <laughs> very stylish. <laughs> this guy has no want- socks and fighting Keanu Reeves. That's like totally 2022. I want the new. I want those new Ray Bans he's rocking. So. <laughs> Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> I okay. Well, we're gonna wrap things up. Final thoughts, John, before we leave about the Matrix. Uh, is there any final final things that you want to mention quickly about the Matrix Revel? Yeah, well, 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 Revel- it's not gonna be at Revel- yeah. revolutions. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna be the top reloaded. of my legacy sequel. Um, I'm very happy that it came along. Uh, I definitely am gonna watch it again. Uh, I love seeing all those performances. I think you're gonna get out of it what you what you want, like uh, like. You know, like if you were expecting like a, you know, pop, eat, eat your popcorn uh, summer blockbuster. No, this is not, this is not that type of movie. Um, so I, I think if. But it could have been. Wanna, uh, yeah. It, uh, it was never going to be that. Maybe it could have been turned out worse if they went full out action. Yeah. Or not worse, I say, but it could have turned into a complete mess if they went full out action. I, I'm pretty sure we've seen our share of Matrix wannabes. That just went full out action. Equili- didn't work. Equili- uh, was it Equilibrium? Was that that was the one with yeah. the that came out first? Did that come out first before the Matrix? Equilibrium came out before oh, the Matrix. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. My yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of movies along this vein that that tried to go the all action route. I, I I actually really liked how they told this story, and and now we've got something that happened. Like we know what happened after this agreement with the human and machines, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm I'm perfectly happy with it, but I understand why some people aren't, and you know it's too bad. <laughs> I know for sure the Dark City came up before this movie, and I love Dark City. So if we're gonna talk it's about true. movies that are like hit the ground running, Dark City is. Oh, just I'm wrong. Equilibrium kiss. came out in 2002, so you're right. I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking. I'm like, I remember that poster. I I'm like, came out it was earlier. like Christian Bale and <laughs> yeah. and T Diggs. Tay Diggs. Yeah, Tay yeah. Diggs. Um, Rob, final thoughts? I'll say it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm glad it exists for those who really enjoy it. Uh, I'm still on the fence. I'm not, I don't hate it. I don't, I don't, I don't love it. I'm okay with it. I have to see it again to really, uh, cement my position. And I, I, I think everybody should watch it for sure. Everybody should watch it regardless of what you've heard. I think you should watch it. Eh, um, I don't and, think and, you should watch it. If you don't, I like do, the, I do. I think if you, if you like see two the, and three, yeah, but if you see, even if you've seen the first one, it, it's intrinsically you've only uh, seen number one yeah that's what i'm saying if you've only seen number one i think you could find something out of it to enjoy because they really do use number one. i don't remember this right, well andre's gonna it. disagree with me about everything hey i'm gonna remember this when we get to season of witcher three and you're like i don't want to watch anymore We're like well you've already yeah, seen two and one and two you must come up with witcher three i don't no. remember this rob no but i think you I just think dug yourself may, your I, hole yeah whatever yeah. all right that's my that's my thoughts it doesn't matter <laughs> You're just upset that you'll have to watch Witcher season three now. I'm not gonna uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I, I I'll stand by my statement. If you enjoyed the other movies, then I think I think you'll enjoy this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a couple things that that we should mention or talk about, and and sometimes you don't realize what makes a good sequel until you see that sequel, and sometimes a good sequel isn't just regurgitating what you saw before. Uh, we've seen it in, you know, everybody talks about like the the best of the Star Wars is Empire Strikes Back, and Empire Strikes Back is 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 not thematically the same as 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 Star Wars. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things that make it better. Uh, one of the greatest uh, horror movies of all time, Alien, is followed up by a sequel that many people consider way better, and it is absolutely nothing like the first one in Aliens. So sometimes a sequel has to be different in order for the story to progress, because if not, all you are doing is rebranding, uh, not rebranding, you are, you're regurgitating the same thing. I think what this movie does is it gives us a natural progression, something that feels organic to where the, where the series left off. It couldn't be a big Hollywood blockbuster action fest, because again, that's what three was. All of three was action. So if they tried to outdo three, you wouldn't have done it. There's a great line in this movie in which um, Jada Pinkett Smith character says something else blinds you or, 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 or drowns you out of, and, and that's war. And they talk about how war blinded how the people of Zion lived. And that's exactly 
it, it's a it's a perfect metaphor for what you're talking about. It had to be different in order to move forward. Now, if you're not interested in that, if you were never interested in what the Matrix had to offer, in that when you paid attention to the movie, they talk about philosophy and they talk about things. If that's not for you, then this movie isn't going to be for you, even though it does have the trappings of 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 action. It is not an action fest. So if you have seen all of them and you're curious, see it. If you saw them but weren't interested after the first one, I'd probably say, hey, spend your time watching something you love because there's no point in, you know, spending two, two and a half hours and then regretting it or being like, eh, it was meh, you know? So better to enjoy something that you think you're going to like. Cool. Uh, thank you, Andre. Uh, so John, Andre, where can they find you guys? Uh, in the virtual world and in the desert of the real. Yeah, so Heroes World Online is going to be your uh, red pill, I guess, um, to take oh, you John, to don't everything. Do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> no. So the no, YouTube, don't do this. Facebook, Instagram, you're going to find all our stuff there. New releases. We try to post them every Monday and constantly as we get them throughout the week. Uh, so fun stuff. If you're not on the channel, we got a lot of great things going on, a lot of fun shows. So check those out. If you're listening to the Audio Heroes World podcast on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your uh, podcast on Spotify, you can now give us a rating out of five stars. So uh, if you like our content, please hook us up. Give us five stars. It'll help with uh, said algorithms and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, Andre's got uh, where we can find us in the real world. Yeah, so we are a uh, brick and mortar store. Highway 7 in Warden. We are still open. We're open five days a week. That's uh, Monday through Saturday. No, Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, of course, there's slightly different hours for the holidays, but you can usually get us there 12 to 6 during the week. And again, as John's saying, we get new stuff all the time. Everything from comics, board games, toys, action figures, collectibles, you name it, miniature games, models. If you are worried about another lockdown and you need something to take your mind off of it we definitely can hook you up and make some recommendations for you awesome uh rob yeah so if you choose to, uh, to to take the blue pill and uh have a good time and you can whatever blue pill you want to take to have a good time you're more than welcome to uh you can join john and i monday nights on the heroes world sidekick show at 8 15 on youtube twitch and facebook uh, where we're, we're, you know, Hey, we're kicking off a new year in a few days. Uh, and so John and I are going to, I don't know what the hell we're doing, uh, for Monday show, but we're going to tune in and find out. Uh, we're going to have a good time. We might be talking about things that we're looking forward to this year. And we might, uh, we've been mulling over a, uh, what John's personal favorite thing to get to, to do is a nineties action movie bracket. So for him, the 90s were the best era of action movies, so we might be kicking that off into 2022, but definitely join us. Got um, capped Monday. off with The Matrix in 1999. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, how many times is Keanu going to do this? We had Speed into Matrix into John Wick, like three times he's completely changed the genre or, or, or leveled up the genre. You forgot about the time traveler's wife, John. Jesus, come on. No, I, well, I uh, forgot about, about the about, uh, 13 Ronin, John. You forgot about that, John. <laughs> what, about, what, about, what about his, what about a starring role in Parenthood, John? Come on, did you forget about that? No, My I own private Idaho. Uh, what about Johnny Mnemonic, John? Dracula. Oh, Johnny Mnemonic. <laughs> Dracula. Dude, it's a gig, John. I don't think you understand how big of that file is. A gig <laughs> in his brain. I don't understand anyone. I don't, can I say that again? A gig. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you understand technology, but it's it's a gig of information that's in his brain that he's carrying yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah, and that I don't think lot. we'll ever be able to experience what it's like to have a gig <laughs> with us. But, no, uh, you no, know, in such a small, small way. But uh, you know, there we go. Um, yeah, forty-seven Ronin is what I'm thinking about. Thirteen Ronin. What's oh, the, the man from Tai Chi? I was like, what's thirteen? John? Thirteenth Warrior, uh, man know? of Tai Chi. He directed and, it. Yes, and he was also <laughs> started in it. He uh, was in it. Know? It was good. He, he, yeah. he also he 47 was, Ronin is a great movie. I quite enjoy yeah, that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and and let's not forget his uh the hardball and sweet November. These are things, John. Movies that can hardball, yeah. If you want to cry at the end, go for it. <laughs> you want to be really sad. Um but go watch Spider-Man no Baby. Way home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I think G Baby's fate is definitely sad. Oh, don't ruin it, damn it. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to do another <laughs> review momentarily, but thank you all. Have a good one. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Take care. See ya. Bye.